Hello, welcome to Color Theory. I'm going to start by showing you your first demo with using Photoshop. I'm going to review a few things in case um, you haven't worked with Photoshop before. Um, I'm sure at this point you've worked with at least one of the Adobe programs and they're all very similar and the PCs and the Macs are also very similar. There are slight changes so you might have to, from one to the other, you might have to hunt around a little bit. Um, and the Option key on the Mac would be the alternate key on the PC. I'm on a Mac, so I um, always say Option. If you're on a PC, please know that it's Alt. Sometimes I remember to say it, but in the middle of doing a demonstration, I sometimes forget to um, mention the command key for for the Mac for the PC. So sorry about that. <clears throat> so I have Photoshop open. I am going to say Create New. So you hear, see up here, there's different formats. So we are going to be working in print. We're going to be printing something from a piece of paper. So hopefully you all have um, a printer in your house. If you don't, we'll talk later about ways to work around that. Um, so I'm going to go to print, and what it's going to show me are typical paper sizes, okay? So if you're doing something digital, it doesn't matter whether it's going to be printed out or not, but we're going to be doing something on a piece of letter paper. It's the most common printed size. So when I hit legal, you see the numbers change here. When I hit letter, it changes. It doesn't matter at this point whether we're doing horizontal or vertical, but I'm going to do horizontal. And the resolution is 300 pixels, um, which is good. And we've got a color mode. I'm going to put it on CMYK because if you think about your printer and you're printing in color you're going to have CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and key so you can think of them as cyan is blue, magenta is red, and yellow uh, is yellow which are your primary colors and they're the colors in your ink wells. Okay? Um, and we're going to have a white background and we're going to say create. So here is our page. So um, just to go over, I like to keep my page tidy. So instead of having my box floating around, I put it over here in the left so that um, I don't accidentally hit something in the background. The other thing is your toolbar. You've got a toolbar here. You've got windows over here. And you've got your main navigation up here. And then this changing dynamic toolbar up here. So if you are missing any of your toolbars, you're going to go to Windows and Tools over here turns the left toolbar on or right, on or off, and all these other ones turn the windows that are on your right side on or off. So some that I like to use um, are layers. So I'm going to turn the layers on. So here's my layers right here. And then a way that you can manage um, these, if you don't use properties very often, you can um, pull properties out that little tab and then you can close it. Um, if you use adjustments a lot you can drag it and notice the way I'm getting that little blue line there that's going to make it a line here and if you use libraries you can move that around and get it to stick there and then it slid everything over so it's giving me more workspace. So that's why I like to work you might just like to see more of those boxes. I also use layers a lot so I want to keep that at the bottom and then I use histories a lot, which I'm going to keep up at the top. So now I am on the background layer. This here adds one more layer, a little plus, so I'm going to put a plus sign, and that's going to give me a transparent layer. Notice the way my background is white. If I shut that off, I get this dotted line or uh, little um, checkerboard. So that's telling me it's a transparent background. So I'm going to put on the background layer that's white just so it's not distracting to us. Um, so now what I'm going to do are grab some guidelines. So if you don't see your rulers here, you go under view, which is viewing the whole page, and you're going to go to um, rulers. I have my rulers on, but I can go and turn rulers off in a little check mark shows up okay so I have eight and a half by eleven so you see zero and eleven and uh, zero and eight and a half if your increments are not the way mine are showing up or if anything seems a little off preferences are what control everything for your whole 
um, program. So you set your preferences the way you like them to work. And then every time you go back in, they'll automatically load. So you can jump to the different um, pieces here, or you can go in general and just flip through. So this is units and rulers that I'm talking about here. So you can change your units to centimeters, millimeters, but if they're pixels, which the default is pixels, so that's why I'm showing you this. So I want you to know how to find inches so you can turn to inches. Mine already said inches because I've been working on this for a while, but if it's new for you, it probably is loaded in um, pixels, so you want to know how to change that. Okay, so here we are, and I am going to drag a guide over here. Now I'm going to put on my reading glasses for a moment just so I can make sure I see my guide go directly to the one. So see the way they snap a little? That's something that you can also set up in the view to snap on or snap off and they sort of jump to the place you want them. So it can be a pain in the neck or it can be really helpful. In this case it's helpful. So here I've put some guidelines in that are um, inch apart and then I'm going to go to my marquee tool and I'm going to start in this corner and see I can drag around. But if I hit the shift key, it's going to constrain it so it makes it a perfect square. That's also if you're using um, circles as well. So even though I'm dragging straight across here, notice the way it's keeping it a square. So I'm going to let that go, and then I have a color picker over here, so I can click on the color, and I want to make this um, 0, 0, 0, and 5. So this is cyan, magenta, yellow, and key for key plate, and I am going to make it 5%. Okay, then I am going to grab my paint bucket, which sometimes is hidden behind other tools, so you can click on this little teeny arrow. I'm going to say OK. So if I click on this little teeny arrow here, it shows you the different tools. So you may have it hidden under your gradient tool. So here I have my paint bucket, and I'm going to click, and there I have my 5%. So now I am going to um, create a new layer. So I can go up here. This little, um, I call it the hamburger, has a lot of powerful things. So you can say duplicate layer and it's going to give me a copy of that. Or I could have taken this and dragged it to the plus and it makes a duplicate of it as well. Okay, so with all these Adobe programs there's a lot of different ways to do each one of these um, things. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag this over and notice the way it snaps in right there. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change this to 10. Grab my paint bucket, say OK, grab my paint bucket, and click. And then I'm going to go to this other layer I had here. And I'm going to drag it right there. And um, I'm going to, sorry, I have a new puppy. I'm going to uh, go back to, my new puppy is distracting me a little bit here, 15. And then I'm going to grab my paint bucket and click that. Okay, so you are going to do this zero. Um, you're going to start with 5, 10, 15, 20, go all the way up to 100%. Okay, and so what you're getting is percentages of gray. Now, if you're like me, you might have a home printer that's not ideal. My home printer is not that great. So I am going to actually do a little bit of a cheat and I am going to show you another way to create these boxes by going um, very similar. I can go and create my box here. Again, holding down the shift key, right? And then um, I grab the color picker here but also you have a color palette here. And if you don't see these bars showing up here, again, you would go to the hamburger and you would go and adjust. So I want to see my CMYK slider. So if that is unchecked, you're not going to 
check. Um, it seems to be holding steady. <laughs> anyway, if I wanted to switch to um, a different one, like RGB, it switches it. So here I am going to my CMYK. So you can also change these percentages here. So I'm going to make it 05. And then for this one, I'm actually going to add 5%. Actually, I don't need to just hit the zero. 5% of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So I've got all three of these layered up here, and I'm going to go instead of also to my, my paint bucket, which I showed you, you can also go up to edit and fill, and it will fill. Um, you want to click until you get to foreground color, which is the color that's showing up in the front here, and you can say OK. OK. Now again, I am going to, um, I've got this on. <laughs> both on the same layers. So let me create a new layer here and I am going to drag again, holding down the shift key to get a perfect square there. And I am going to go up to my painter's palette and I am going this time to make 10, 10, 10, and 10, okay? So, and then I can go up again to fill, foreground color, opacity 100%, and there I go. So those are two different ways to fill your squares and duplicate pages. Um, and this first set is just 100%, um, they're all black. But then the second row I am going to do in um, all CMYK, which is a little bit different and it's just a workaround for your different printers and I will show you um, in a little bit a demonstration of why I'm having you do that and why it might be beneficial for you or it might not be. So now that you have this file you are going to save. <clears throat> so now I'm going to have you save this as a PDF. Because if you do not have a printer in your home, you may have a neighbor who has a printer or you might have a printer shop that you'll need to use. So if you save it as a PDF, then you can go and email it to your neighbor or email it to your local copy shop and um, give them the request to print this from their equipment. So a PDF or a JPEG are both files that are easily um, accessed from other people's programs. Um, if you were to save it as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file, the native file, it, it you have to actually open that program. So if your neighbor or the print shop doesn't have Photoshop, then they're not going to be able to open it. So once you get this window, you can save it as a, as a JPEG or as a Photoshop PDF. If you just keep it on Photoshop, it saves it as a PSD file, as you see here. So you're going to save it as a Photoshop file. Please, please, please get in the habit of naming all your files with your last name, your, your first name, and then this is, um, there'll be a specific title for each project. So this is your gray scale, and then a PDF. It's crucial that you put your name in all the time because your project, if it's called Grayscale and everyone hands in their project called Grayscale, they're all going to get mixed up. Um, the other thing too is when you are a professional and you're handing in your resume to somebody, you want to be in the habit of putting your name on your file. Okay, so um, then you can actually flatten your layers. So I am going to unclick this. And so when I save this file, to be printed, it will all be a flattened file, okay? Um, you might want to also save your file, your working file, still as your grayscale file, PSD, which will retain the layers. So by flattening your file, you delete the layers. By clicking off layers, you flatten it all, okay? So I am going to keep my layers for now so I have my native file, okay?